Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in crypto and bring out a bite-sized pieces. Today, just the thumbnail suggests, is retail in control or is it really institutional investors? We're gonna take a look at data that should suggest that institutions are really running everything. So what we're gonna do is a little bit something different. We're gonna take a look at what's going on now. We're gonna talk about a little wealth preservation because it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep. Then finally, we're gonna take a look at the future. So we'll take a look at the, a little bit of blue chips, uh, what's going on with the crypto blue chip, and then what's going on into the future. So the first things first, let's just talk about what's going on in the market. Again, uh, we're looking at December 28th, 29th, wow. But time by time is flowing by so fast. And again, another day where we're just kind of bobbing up and down. Market cap is 2.24 trillion, and we're down almost a point. So hey, it is what it is, and uh, you really can't take that into uh, or, t or overlook what's going on. And the big thing is the idea here is that people are they're selling off and they're uh, you know doing everything for taxes, and then also institutions are locking in their profits. You know because hedge funds they want to show that they are in profit and that they're up. 700% of whatever they're doing. Sure, great. Maybe that's it. And maybe that's not. The big thing is, is that, uh, you know, in this channel, we talk a lot about just holding strong and just seeing where things go. But the big thing is investing into uh, projects that are actually can weather the test of time. And the ones that have so far, well, these two ones right here, Bitcoin, Ethereum, looking pretty darn good. Uh, we're at uh, negative 0.31% actually, down below 50, Ethereum is 3,700, Binance coin, everything's down across the board. Let's just call it what it is. And uh, even the top, gosh, in the top 10, 15, 16, Uniswap's the only one that's up pretty big over the seven days, 16%. 8% for Algorand, and that's in the 19th. Good for you, Algorand holders. And then Near Protocol up 8% in 24 hours. That's pretty good for a pretty bad day. So that's what's going on in the market. We're just moving either sideways or slowly going down. A couple of projects are turning a profit, but not many. And if we take a look at uh, some on chain analysis, like we always do, I don't really, you've already heard about this all miners outflow. We can actually see here, if we're taking a look at miners that are actually uh, selling right now, we can see that uh, over the, if we break this down by day, and then well, let's just do day, not hour. But you can see there's a little bit of an uptick uh, of miners selling as far as like 27 December. So there's people that are taking profits and they got to take profits because like we talked about as far as like taxes, perhaps. Uh, also exchange reserves, Bitcoin's being taken off, but it looks like there's a little bit some that are being put back on, which would make sense because some people are selling. Uh, all exchange reserves for Ethereum, a little bit uptick. And I don't really care so much about that. What I care about is this. And I keep talking, harping on this, harping on this, harping on this, because I really do think it's, it's a powder keg and uh, it could blow up at any time. This is the all exchange estimated leverage ratio. And what this is, is all exchange open interest divided by their Bitcoin reserve. So anything over 0.2 is super ridiculous high. And right now we were looking at a all time high of 0.216. Now, does that mean everything's going to collapse and everything else? No, it just means that those uh, those leverage plays could sink a lot of traders. And that's what's going on as far as on-chain analysis. Now, let's just dig into uh, this little metric, which talks about our institutions running the show. And this was a really good one. I found this on uh, Twitter. This is from Will Clemente. Uh, you've probably seen him on uh, the Pomps podcast, really smart guy. And uh, he just talks it and says like this, look, if we're going to take a look at what's going on as far as retail versus institutions, uh, there hasn't been much going on for retail since spring. And what he's talking about here, let me blow this up so we can see it. Let me actually lift it up so you can see it. So this is from Glassnode. And what this is, is total transaction fees. So when we have total transaction fees and they are uh, you know, because every single person that transacts with Bitcoin, if they're doing just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, there's probably a lot of fees going on because there's small people or individuals like me and you, let's 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 call a spade a spade, moving Bitcoin around a little bit. But the whales don't have to pay so much because they're moving, you know, millions, 100 million around at one uh, uh, instance. So it's not like they have to pay for all these little transactions, just one transaction to move 100 million. That's why around April or so, it just kind of died off because all the whales are like, okay, well, I'll move it here, I'll move it there, but I'm not moving $100 worth of Bitcoin that I got from a, from a referral bonus. I'm moving $250 million, uh, from this big 
uh, interest play that I got. And uh, that's all I have to do. So we can see here that, okay, as far as transaction fees, but maybe it's not that. Maybe the people just aren't moving uh, Bitcoin. We'll take a look at this. So there's two more, and then we'll get to the big guys. Total transfer volume breakdown by size. And we can see here in the pink, this is a volume of zero to a thousand. And uh, this this black line here, right here is the uh, is the price of Bitcoin looking pretty good, uh, but unfortunately from volume of zero to a thousand we can see a big drop off. People aren't really buying too much here from between zero and a thousand. But what about like something a little bit higher? How about one thousand to ten thousand? Well, a little bit more happened back here, but it still dropped off. Well, what about this big guy of volume 10 million plus and we can see back here not too much then a big tidal wave and it dropped off as as everybody started to sell off and everything else in april or so and now it is picking back up exponentially so if we can take a look at this we can say that yeah maybe these institutional investors really are running the show right now but i have to tell you it doesn't matter in the long run. If you're into a project, like I'm not talking about the projects who are like 500, 600, 7,000 in the uh, market cap realm. If you're in some of the blue chips and it's a pretty good project and you feel like it's a pretty good project and you're investing into it, sure, why don't you just stay the course? Now, not all of these are gonna do really well. Some are actually gonna die off and that's just the way it is. But for me, I just think it kind of looks like this. This is the plan. The plan in 2022 is the same almost as in 2021. I'm going to, the majority is just to, to hold on uh, for these different positions, but I'm going to reveal the ones I'm going to get rid of and just consolidate because it is about that time. But I'm going to be keep doing on a dollar cost average in, dollar cost average out, have my exit strategy and keep going. BTD is buy the dip and of course, HODL for the long term because that is where most of the wealth is made. Now, I'm also gonna trade a little bit, that's like 3%, and I'm gonna gamble a little bit, and that's for like some metaverse plays, because those are long-term plays. Those aren't like get rich quick tomorrow, or a month, or even a year. That's a long, that's a one, two, three, four, five plus year play, the metaverse. And of course, even some NFTs. So that's on the left-hand side. And there's another big thing to, to take into consideration, and this will lead me to uh, my next point, which if we're talking about retail is out we move into wealth preservation so you can see on that bottom right hand corner where we've got wealth and it says i trust capital and there's a little house and then a big m so i trust capital that stands for i trust capital so look this is what i use as far as a crypto roth ira i chose a roth ira because it is post-tax dollars and what that means is that i am actually paying taxes and already in the money that, that that has gone into this ira i'm picking up my crypto that i want to put into this roth ira and if my bitcoin or my ethereum or my blah 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 goes all the way up to like a million dollars guess how much i pay in taxes zero so that's why i have an i trust capital ira also there is no monthly fees and if i want to trade within my account it is tax free. You have to pay for one you know, percent for you know swapping your transaction, but not too shabby. So that is the first part of what I do. And then also masterworks. So if you are into wealth preservation, this is a great one. This is what I use right now. And the reason I'm talking about it is because I picked up a Banksy today, an art piece. And what this is is you can buy a fractionalized share of multi-million dollar pieces of artwork. So what I do with this is these guys do all the hard work and I just put my money in and they buy these, these art pieces and they sell it on time in like two, three, five years or so. But I don't care because the money that I have to sit in the bank is doing nothing for me. So I might as well put into some other investments. I did a deep dive into uh, iTrust, into Masterworks, and then also I did a deep dive into real estate and you can find all three of those there's a link in the description it looks just like this and these are my three pillars of wealth preservation roth ira fractionalized share of our pieces and real estate and i'll show you how i do it and what i'm doing also for i trust you get a hundred dollar sign up for the masterworks you skip the uh, wait list and then for the real estate playlist well that's just free to show you how i do pick up real estate and how i actually purchase things uh, as far as with um, short-term rentals, VRBO, Verbo, and Airbnb. So that's what we have for that piece. And then also, there's another thing that is going to lead into m moving forward, and that is follow the developers. And I saw this this video, and it's starting to make or this uh, piece, and it's starting to make a lot more sense 
as I've been talking to more individuals and in the projects of the metaverse. And this makes a lot of sense now. So this is a quick snippet. It says Apple aims to prevent uh, <laughs> defections to meta with a 180,000 bonus for top talent. And all it is, Apple Inc. has issued unusual and significant stock bonuses to some engineers looking to stave off defections to tech rivals such as Facebook uh, owner meta platforms. But they're not just losing them there. They're also losing them into blockchain. They're also losing them into metaverse plays. And again, they're doing this by issuing them stock and it's, uh, it's parceled out over years. But what I've seen, the people that I've been talking to for these metaverse plays, because as you know, I like real estate. I like real estate that's real, real. And I like real estate that is virtual. And I think that is the next big play. So I've been talking to a lot of different places from people who have connected me, uh, people who are pretty high up, honestly, and they've got some pretty good ideas. But the thing that the projects that I delve into and have uh, invested into are the ones that have the developers because there right now is a shortage. And I've talked to one group. They wouldn't even give me the names of the developers because they were like, look, we're not going to have them poached right now. We've got some of the best ones and we're not going to lose them. So when I talk about follow developers, that's where it all comes to and actually good developers, which leads me to my next point as far as when we talk about uh, moving forward or looking forward. We already talked about the blue chip stuff, the Bitcoins, the Ethereums, the Solanas, the Cardanos, the Avalanches, all that stuff in the top 20 or so, right? That's great. But to look forward, and these are like forwards thinking like year, three year, five year, seven year plays. This is what I've been talking about. So the metaverse play, there was one that I did a deep dive. It's called Genso Kishi game. It's a game that's already on Android, iOS. It's already on uh, a Nintendo Switch and also on PlayStation. So they're gonna move over from those platforms, free to play, to the metaverse, play to earn. I think it's gonna be pretty big because they've got a lot of, well, first they have a great community. They've got a lot of developers and things are really moving fast. Also, just so you know, I had to talk about this today because it'll be an IDO, an initial DEX offering, and it's going to happen on January 18th, 2022. So if you would like to get into this, I can't tell you what to do. I'm just a kickstart. Uh, as far as education, you must do your own research. I'm not a financial advisor, and this is just financial opinion, not financial advice. So it might behoove you to take a look at this project on top of the fact that if you want more information, I did a deep dive. I'll link in the description, also link at the very end. This is on my second channel over at Digital Asset News Clips where we do just deep dives. So I don't even monetize that channel. So check that uh, video out. On top of the fact, there's also another one. If you're big into this project called MetaHero, which takes you and scans you and puts you into the metaverse, uh, that one did initially, I wanna say between 45 or 65X from the time from the pre-sale all the way to the launch has been handing out pretty strong. A little bit of dips here and there, but not too bad. So if you're familiar with with uh, Meta Hero, this is, should probably be on your radar. And what we're talking about here is one called Everdome. It's another metaverse play, and they are partnering up because the same developers that are working on Meta Hero, and those are some, there are some great ones, and I'll, you can find why it's so big in the deep dive that I did. This one is also coming to fruition because they have. They just released their new uh, section of their uh, website. It tells you everything that, that they're doing as far as branding, social, buy, sell products, marketplace, how this uh, metaverse really fits in everything. I thought this was interesting. Medicine, gain new opportunities to diagnose diseases or care medical consultations. Interesting. That's crazy. Also, they break down the tokenomics, which I think was the missing component. And right now, if you have purchased uh, the Hero token, which again, did pretty darn well, or you're on the Tencent Gem Launchpad DGLP, uh, you were already uh, into that sale. So this one is coming out in Q1 2022. I'm not for sure on the exact dates, but I needed to tell you now because if it's in January, probably should know about that. Again, this is your initial kickoff to these types of information and these types of projects. I also did a deep dive on this one. You can find that in the same place, Digital Asset News Clips, and these are looking into the future. So look, I am biased. I only talk about the things that I actually buy because I have skin in the game. I will never talk about things. I'm like, that looks good and not really uh, put anything into it because I think that these plays will be big. I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. So it's up to you to do your own research. And that is it for today. So look, I know there's a lot of information, a lot of things going on, but I want to say if you stuck with me all the way in, thanks. I appreciate it. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider uh, subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. And that's it for today. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.